So there's this weird thing with Blender where you usually see, you know, the basic tools uh, here on the left side. But these tools oftentimes have functionalities that you only really find if you actually look into them more. So for example, what I want to cover today are cloth simulation brushes. The first one that I mean is the pose brush. The pose brush, if you go here into the deformation target, you can change from geometry to cloth simulation. Which of course does exactly what it says. It simulates this mesh as if it was a cloth simulation. And this expands the functionality of this brush so, so much more. And you can actually use it to sculpt cloth. I can now go in here and I can just bend this in different directions and it creates some sort of <laughs> cloth simulation. Of course, these cloth simulations also always depend on what the topology looks like. So if the topology is very, like these faces are very long, then the cloth simulation always takes that into account as well. But of course, the pose brush can do more than just rotation and twisting. It can also do different stuff like scale and translate, which, uh, you know, can bring stuff together. Or it can also do squash and stretch. Squash and stretch just stretches, you know, stuff together, which is very, very useful, for example, if you want to do like um, sleeves that are pulled up, for example. Of course, this is only the basic functions. You can then also switch the rotation origin from topology, which is automatically defining where the anchor point up there is, where the line ends coming from the middle of the cursor. Uh, you can also switch that to face sets. And then you, if you, for example, draw a face set, you can go in here and zip. We can see it immediately goes to the face set ending. No matter what, how big the cursor is, it goes to the face set ending. And this way you can control where the anchor point is and you can define how much, for, for example, you want to pull up, how much you want to squash and stretch. So for example, if I make this shorter, you can see I only push this area down here. But what you can also see is that this brush kind of respects where you're grabbing the cloth and in which direction you push it. So for example, if I do this and I squash and stretch, you can so, oh, there you go, <laughs> flung away. It goes in, in, in this direction. But if we do it in this direction, you can see it, it pulls it in that direction. That is where we get to the next brush, which is the boundary brush. I already covered the boundary brush in a recent video. If you want to see that, then you can check that out. I want to focus more not on the functionality of the brush, but more on the cloth simulation brush and how you can use the brush for your characters. Of course, right now the deformation is on bend. So if you bend this, you can see what happens. We can either, you know, fold it in different directions, basically, which can be pretty useful if you, for example, have puffed up sleeves. But what I, for example, want to do to push up, push this up is we can go in here and we can use instead of bend, we can use grab. We can sort of mark which edge we want to use. And then we can just go in here, for example, and we can grab it up and push it upwards. The boundary brush looks at the edge and then pushes the whole edge upwards. If it looks a little bit too like even, you can see it's very, very even when it comes to the folds. You can also change that, of course, if you just add a little bit of like unevenness, make it add some wrinkles in beforehand, you can see that it adds slightly different folds. So this way you can add some more variation into the folds. You can also go in here and you can change the boundary fall off to brush radius. The brush radius basically looks at how big the brush is and the area that is underneath the cursor is being affected by the brush. And this way you can also create some pretty cool little deformations. And the third brush is not necessarily a setting in a different brush, but it's actually just the cloth filter brush. But the way this works is a little bit, I guess, weird at first. If you, for example, just want to go in here and you want to just make her wear this weird t-shirt, you can just go in here and say, hey, I want to use collisions. You could go in here and say filter type, let's use gravity. And now we, you know, gravity this, <laughs> we can see nothing happens. We need to make sure that in the simulation setting, collision is enabled. Just click this and then the collision is enabled right there. We do the same here. And now the cloth can actually collide with the object. And then we apply the mesh filter again. We can see it actually lands on the body. So if you want to create some very, very basic clothing, you can use it like this, for example. Of course, there are some, you know, problems right here. For example, this, some of these weird folds come from the model, maybe not 100% looking like actual clothing or what the pattern for clothing look like. So maybe you have to tweak the clothing a little bit so that the folds look more natural. But this is a the you know easiest way you can apply clothing to a character and it looking, you know, fairly decent. But of course, that is not what I have done, for example, for this character here. I have separated the sleeves from the arms, which now allows me to go into scope mode. And I can use, for example, the boundary brush. And then if we push it down, we can see we create some pretty nice folds like this. I kind of found that the cloth simulations kind of work worse and worse the more resolution you have. So these cloth sculpting tools are very, very useful for the big folds. For the fine folds, I would always sculpt them myself. Another great feature that will make the cloth filter brush even better 
is the functionality that you can use face sets. Face sets basically allows you to color code different areas of your model, which basically are like different groups of vertices. But once you mark something on your model, you can then go into the cloth filter brush and then you can enable use face sets. This way you only affect the area that is basically marked as the same color. And of course, because of the cloth simulation, everything else gets kind of pulled with the affected area. This way, for example, you can make more distinct and local changes with the cloth builder brush that you couldn't do without face sets. And then the great example of that is the leather straps or the corset that she's wearing. To create that, you can, for example, paint the face at the edge of the shirt. And then you can, for example, pull it up to create these folds that are being created because of the corset that is pushing up. And then you can use the cloth filter brush to use the scale function and pull the model closer to the body. Another thing you should know about the cloth filter brush, the scale, for example, just scales the mesh down equally, but it scales it to the pivot point of your mesh. So for example, if you have like a strap that pulls the cloth tighter, you would then want to place the pivot point in a, in a place where the scale function would actually do that. But with the push and pull and nudge and whatever functionalities of these different brushes, you can create probably most of the folds that you would see in a shirt. It always comes down to the way you separate the shirt or the clothing that you have into different models so that you can utilize the edges that you create this way and manipulate the clothing so that, that the folds are looking the way that you want them to look. And then of course, having a lot of references to know, you know, what the folds are supposed to look like. I also tried using the cloth brush, but for some reason, the cloth brush just is so weird <laughs> in the way it works that I couldn't really get it to work the way that I wanted to. I think the cloth brush is very useful if you have a mesh that is already set in its shape and you only want to add like small folds into it that can add more detail to it. For example, like pillows or stuff like that. If you have any more questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.